I am a consultant ophthalmologist for the Manchester Royal Hospital and a professor of ophthalmology and retinal regeneration for the University of Manchester. I've been uh, working in ophthalmology for uh, 23 years now, always with an interest uh, not only in uh, clinical care, but in uh, research, in new therapies. Well, the Manchester Royal Eye Hospital is one of the oldest eye hospitals in the world. The Manchester Royal Eye Hospital was uh, founded in 1814 as a dedicated eye hospital. We are a teaching institution. We are affiliated to the University of Manchester and we are very proud about this, this link. OCT technology or optical coherence tomography technology has uh, evolved significantly over the last uh, 15 years. I've started using uh, optical coherence tomography in ophthalmology in 1998. At that time we were using uh, time domain technology. We then moved on to Fourier domain technology and now on to swept source technology. OCT is uh, strongly linked nowadays with uh, Topcon as a company. Uh, Topcon introduced the first uh, Fourier domain system back in 2006. It was the first system with 3D uh, rendering software. Now Topcon has introduced SwebSource OCT technology. The product is called DRI OCT1 Atlantis. The main differences with uh, Fourier domain technology is that uh, DRI uh, OCT1 Atlantis uses uh, longer wavelength, uh, 1050 nanometers versus 850 uh, nanometers. Faster scanning, 100,000 A-line scans per second. We obtain uh, very long scans, 12 millimeter scans, opposite to six millimeter scans. This allows for a, uh, gives us a significant advantage when, when scanning the back of the eye, the posterior pole, because in a single image we not only um, <clears throat> can uh, assess the macula, but also the optic nerve. The faster scanning, the longer wavelength, allow for uniform image quality, allows for minimal eye movement because of the use of infrared light, the faster scanning, the infrared light, allow for less light scattering and better penetration through opaque media, for example cataracts or an opaque vitreous. The longer wavelength also allows for visualization of the choroid. We can even image the anterior surface of the sclera for the first time in a very detailed way. The resolution has increased and also, uh, very importantly, for the first time, we can clinically document and assess the cortical vitreous. The cortical vitreous is, is, a, is an elusive uh, uh, structure, if I can call it like that, uh, in the eye. It's difficult to visualize uh, with slit lamp uh, by microscopy. There are some publications on uh, the anatomy of the vitreous with slit lamp uh, by microscopy. Most of our knowledge of the cortical vitreous comes from uh, uh, post-mortem uh, specimens that have been stained either with uh, milk or special dyes. Now with uh, the Atlantis uh, OCT system, for the first time we can image these structures in vivo. We think that for the first time we are seeing the invisible not only in the vitreous but also in the outer retina and in the choroid. It is going to be important to, to uh, move to swap source OCTs because <clears throat> most of the treatments now being developed uh, or a significant proportion of new treatments being developed are going to be administered via intravitreal injections. It is therefore imperative to know the anatomy of the vitreous because it may have an impact on the response or non-response to uh, certain therapies. We are already aware of the role of vitromacular adhesions and vitromacular traction in several conditions like diabetic macular edema, uh, central retinal vein occlusion, uh, macular hole, uh, symptomatic vitromacular attachments. So it is going to be important in the future to image not only uh, the retina to say whether there's intra or subretinal fluid present. This is not enough at present. We, all, we will also, we do 
need to image at present the cortical vitreous and the choroid. One of the most important advantages of uh, DRI over EDI is that uh, opposite to EDI, DRI allows for the visualization with excellent image quality across the image, not only of the vitreous, but of the retina, the choroid, and the anterior surface of the sclera in a single image. You don't have to concentrate either on the vitreous or on the choroid. You get an image with good quality extending from the vitreous, cortical vitreous to the anterior surface of the sclera in a single frame. Web source uh, technology is going to be very important for the assessment of the vitroretinal interface. It is only with swept source OCT that we can reliably assess the cortical vitreous and confidently say whether a bursa premacularis is present, whether the cortical vitreous uh, looks normal or not. We can pick up perhaps a higher percentage of vitromacular attachments uh, with swept source OCT that, than with Fourier domain technology. Also, when we try to scan uh, myopic eyes, uh, short-sighted eyes, swept source OCT becomes very important because it allows for uh, excellent image quality um, from the vitreous to the choroid uh, in, in, in a uh, repeatable way. When uh, we were first uh, uh, acquainted with the Atlantis system, we started looking at the neural retina, of course, looking as to whether we could easily image the presence of intra or subretinal fluid, the presence of an intact layer of inner and outer segments of photoreceptors, which is what we are trying to do with Fourier domain technology. However, we quickly realized that uh, there was uh, much more that we could see with uh, the Atlantis OCT and, uh, and we, for the first time, we could see uh, a Bursa Primacularis in vivo very clearly. We were very excited about this finding and even more excited when we could find uh, Bursa Primacularis uh, in other patients. So that led us to believe that uh, the Atlantis OCT could be very useful for imaging the cortical vitreous. We started a study looking at uh, the cortical vitreous of patients. We looked at 117 consecutive scans and uh, we started comparing our results with, with what's been published in the literature. Seminal work on the cortical vitreous has been uh, published by uh, Vorst, who in 1975 described the presence of the Bursa Primacularis, and then he described the presence of a system of cisterns in the cortical vitreous. We've been able to show with our research that the Bursa Primacularis is not a result of aging of the vitreous, but that the Bursa Primacularis uh, can be present also in young patients. We've uh, imaged uh, with the Atlantis OCT patients as young as five. We think that with DRI uh, uh, OCT1 Atlantis, it is easier to diagnose the presence of retinal tubules in, pres in patients with chronic uh, age-related macular degeneration. It is important to differentiate the presence of tubules from that of uh, intraretinal fluid in the outer retina because retinal tubules uh, are not an indication for treatment. I think the DRI OCT1 Atlantis is going to have a significant impact on, uh, on everyday practice, not only because of the image quality, not only because we can see the vitreous, we can see the choroid, but because it's a very user-friendly system. It takes uh, seconds to obtain a scan. It's, it's, it's got a small um, uh, footprint so it is uh, possible to move the system within rooms in a, in a, in a, in a, in, a, in, a, in an institution. It allows for a deep penetration of ocular structures. We can penetrate through uh, hemorrhages, uh, thin retinal hemorrhages in the macula to assess the status of the choroid and the outer retina. Very importantly, for the first time, we're able to 
objectively assess the cortical vitreous and the vitroretinal interface. It allows for very long scans, 12 mm scans compared to 6 mm scans. So in a single scan, you not only image the macula, but you can also image the disc. The infrared light also allows for minimum eye movement and minimum eye movement allows for uh, better image quality. The combination of uh, very fast uh, scanning, 100,000 A-line scans per second with infrared light, very importantly, allow for uh, good uniform image quality, not only in the retina, in the neural retina, but also in the cortical vitreous and the sclera uh, or the chorate up to the surface of the sclera. I think uh, as uh, we move more and more towards uh, intravitreal uh, uh, injections-based uh, uh, treatments, it is going to be important to study the cortical vitreous, know the state of the cortical vitreous prior to starting treatment, know the state of the cortical vitreous during treatment and after treatment, as the status of the vitreous may have an impact on the response to uh, different therapies. It is going to be more and more important to image these structures in a non-invasive way.